I'm John Seaman. I'm with Kerry Kautzer, and we're at Road America Racetrack in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. This is the 35th consecutive Elkhart Lake Vintage Festival, September 18th, 19th, and 20th. This year is also the 70th anniversary of road racing at Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. Presented by the Vintage Sports Car Driver Association, this vintage racing event features several hundred cars competing in 10 race groups. The featured marks this year are pre-war cars in the West Feature Race and Japanese cars in the East Feature Race. Friday will have practice sessions and the traditional one-hour enduro benefiting disabled American veterans. Saturday will have morning qualifying sessions and afternoon sprint races with the 11th annual Gather on the Green Concours Car Show in the evening. Sunday begins the group races and the 11th annual Kimberly Cup, Sheldon Cup, and Elkhart Lake Cup race. I'm with Steve Bonk, and Steve has a lot of history with Datsuns. Uh, we're standing beside a car that he has driven several times in the vintage races. What we've done this year for Road America is we're doing a all Japanese feature, which has mainly Datsun and Nissans. We do have a Honda over here, um, but we brought all these cars together. We have nine or ten Datsun 510s, which this is. We also have. 10 or 11 240, 260, 280 Z, Z cars, uh, a couple other newer uh, Datsun Nissans. Uh, this car I picked up 23 years ago. Uh, we, we race a, a series called the B Sedan Series, which is emulating what they did back in the day uh, in 1971 and 72. Uh, John Morton uh, has driven this car a couple of times. Uh, John's alive and well. He's 78 years old. This car has an L18 in it, which was what they put in the car's 1800cc engine in uh, 1972. It's got a five-speed transmission. It's making about 200 horsepower. So this is my uh, son, Keegan. He's just joining us, and he's uh, uh, racing this week, and I'm his crew. Just did my first practice session ever in this car. It's probably, it's a pretty big deal. You know, I've grown up, I've watched my dad race this, like, since I was a little kid. So for my first time to hop into the car and finally experience it, it's pretty exciting. Still learning the track in this race car. I mean, it's completely different than what my Nissan 350Z was or anything else I've driven.
I'm with Guy Mortar, and this is a 1929 Ford Speedster. Very close personal friend of mine and a good customer, Bob Prince, uh, decided uh, after we found a magazine article where a guy had recreated a Bugatti out of a Model A, uh, he came to me and he said, uh, is this something you could do? And I said, well, probably, but it's not going to be exactly like a Bugatti, and it can't have a four-cylinder engine in it because it needs more balls than that. So we compete in a, in a pre-war class, so we used a, a 1941 Chevrolet engine. Um, the uh, rear suspension and stuff is uh, Model A from 1929. The front end is a 1929 Ford. Uh, axle. Uh, we have uh, 1935 Ford wire wheels on it. Uh, all the suspension is home engineered. Well, this is our third uh, season racing it and uh, I'm not sure it's done yet. I think this time I made too many changes. I added three carburetors where I had one before and uh, it really woke the engine up. The body is uh, hand formed. Um, it's made out of aluminum. Uh, I would I would say that I did about 99% of it. Uh, I ran into a little bit of trouble uh, on the most intricate compound curves in the back when I was uh, working on I had to build a buck first, and I was trying to make the metal fit the buck. I met uh, a generous guy named Steve Hamilton up in uh, Fond du Lac, and uh, we worked out a deal where he showed me how to use his equipment, and I paid him for the amount of time that he had invested in it, and uh, the end result is... I got something that I probably never could do at home with just a stump and, a, and an English wheel. So the, the rear compound curves are very hard to do without power shrinking tools. When you were just getting started, how did you get the proportions of the car right? Well, um, I went, uh, Bob wanted a Bugatti, a Type 35 Bugatti. So I went online and I did as much research as I could find and I found um, some uh, line drawings and things of the car and I projected it on the garage door and uh, and then I uh, rigged up the engine and the transmission on a rolling cart and I moved it around in front of the uh, a drawing a, f a full size drawing and then I laid out the frame over that uh, mostly in my mind but I sketched it out and uh, and that's basically what I did I started chopping up the Model A frame until it fit the configuration that I wanted. Well, I love Road America. I, I don't live far from here. I've been coming here for, I don't know, since the late 60s for one reason or another. Uh, it's fast. Uh, the car it goes probably faster than I want to drive it at this point. I'm with Douglas Stewart, and he has a 1935 Riley. Well, this car was uh, converted from a 35 Kestrel. Uh, it's a 1500cc uh, dual cam. It was converted, I think, I'm not sure, uh, 60s or 70s. The previous owner bought it in 85, and he ran it from 85 to 2015 in England and Europe. Uh, campaigned it quite extensively. I got it from him in, in uh, 2017, and I've been running it the last few years up here. But uh, it's a 1500cc. It's got four Emil carburetors on it. That was one of the modifications they made in period. It's uh, got mechanical brakes, uh, friction shocks, pretty much standard 35 stuff. How is it uh, on Road America's uh, four, long, four mile track? You know, it's, uh, this car is, is really a, a better short track car. How is it on maintenance? It's been good. I haven't, uh, just normal maintenance. It's been easy to run. Uh, no transmission issues. They're stout little engines, these, these 1500cc Riley engines.
I'm with Leah Bauer, and she has MG Midget, and this is her actually uh, pretty much the first time she's been in the car this weekend. First time in the car, first time on the track. Um, I bought it with my dad. Uh, about a little over a year ago and just a whole bunch of stuff was wrong with the car and so we've been rebuilding it and now finally it's ready to go still having a little bit of issues today um, it's popping out a third but it's fun I'm just happy to be on track learning how to drive the car grew up driving my dad's and so this is a whole new ball game in this one yeah, I know your dad has been racing here at Road America for many many years and he has the bug eye sprite yeah. So, and you've had a chance to drive that, I think, last year. That's actually what I took my driving school in, and uh, this is his 22nd year of racing, so now it's, I, uh, I'm, I'm catching up to him, so I had to get my own car, and now we're both on track in the same class, and we're having such a blast. It's so much fun. Yeah. I've been coming here for years, so it's, it's a comfortable track for me to be at, because I know the track, I know the layout, um, but yeah, it's, it's a blast every weekend we come. I'm with Bill Wessel, and he has a Datsun 1600 Roadster. Again, it's a G production, 1600 Roadster, owned by Colonel Joe Hauser. It's the third of uh, Roadsters that Joe had. Um, he's a four-time national champion and a, a three-time with the Roadster. This car is actually the car he won with in 82, his last runoffs championship. I bought the car from Joe in uh, 99, I qualified for my first runoffs in 2001 and ran runoffs up until 2013. In my career with SCCA, um, I made it to the podium three times, three thirds, once in, in 2004, 2010, and 2012. 2013 was uh, the last runoffs that was here at Road America. I, I broke two engines and uh, didn't even qualify. After that, I got out of SCCA racing and been doing vintage racing. Still, It's still a kick, to, especially to come and vintage race here at Road America. I was just saying my practice left, got it down full bore into turn five and all the way through the gears down into first gear and it felt like runoffs again, felt competitive. I bought my first uh, street car, a 68 Roadster. Just stayed with Dots and Roadsters. It's all, it's all I got in my garage, it's all Dots and Roadster stuff. <laughs>
I'm with Bill Oates, and he has a Datsun 240Z. It's a 1973 Datsun 240Z. I've had it now 11 years. Uh, bought it as a race car from a gentleman out in Virginia, and have been racing it with Midwestern Council and with VSCDA for 11, 12 years now. We just went up to Groton this year for the first time, which was a great track. We had a great, that was another VSCDA event. It's a stock engine, so it's a, a straight six, um, 2400 cc. Engine that was uh, built by my previous owner as a Sunbelt engine um, and was run for, I think, about 10, 15 years as an SCCA ITS car. Uh, suspension is um, coil over, uh, so that was, but I, I was fortunate to buy it pretty much prepared. I've done some upgrades on the brakes, uh, so I went to full um, Willwood brakes. So it's been pretty reliable then? It's been very reliable. It's uh, a lot of the uh, other car race car drivers are jealous. This is now year 10 on this engine. Yeah, so it's been a very reliable car and a lot of fun to drive. How do you like uh, Road America compared to Blackhawk? Right, it's a completely different track. It's like night and day. Um, I just, matter of fact, put a five-speed transmission back in this car, which it had before. And for Road America, it's almost a necessity. Uh, Blackhawk, I can get away with the four-speed. Blackhawk is kind of our home track. I've driven there more than anywhere. Uh, Road America is a real treat. Uh, a lot of history, a lot of fun, a lot of speed.
I'm with Steve Jacobson, and he has a Datsun you don't see around very often. It's a 1967 and a half Datsun Roadster. It's kind of a special year for these. It's a 1600 pushrod engine, and um, I've had it for about 15 years, and just been racing and having fun with it. It's a body-on-frame car, so unlike the MGs of the era, which were a, a unibody car, it's, it's a very stout car. I certainly race Blackhawk. Uh, I've been to Mid-Ohio, really like Mid-Ohio, that's a great course. Um, Audubon, so some of the Midwestern courses so far. They have done a lot of engine work, but this is a very period prepared car. Unlike some of the other cars that have a lot of race parts, this just has um, Nissan Competition Springs, and that's about it. Just keep the engine going and grease the bearings and, uh, and the brakes. The brakes are, are about this square. So um, you do have to watch out on the brakes. Um, but here at Road America, they get a chance to cool off pretty well. For Road America, we, we say we bring a magazine for the straight. It's a long course and a horsepower track, and this doesn't have a lot of horsepower. So you really have to make it up in the corners and be smart in the corners. Smooth, very well. Smooth, smooth always works good. I love the vintage racing, mostly for the people. You know, the car is just entry, and I just love hanging out with all the the vintage stuff, and, and the people are just great. Good, good fun.
we're going to be doing our cup presentation, which is uh, representative of what racing was back in the day uh, when they did the street races, the Beverly Cup, the Shelton Cup, the Alcott Bay Cup, the Shelton Cup, uh, which was a little interesting. It was on the grid. It was really nice, you know, especially this weekend. It's a nice weekend. It's really nice to go here at the SCPA. Mike Fisher. Mike, I mean, you drive at Austin Healy. So, uh, Lena, how was how was the race? The car's running great. I mean, it's just this thing's been a ball to drive for, I think, what's it, 12, 13 years I've had it. We want to thank all the uh, BSCDA people and the corner workers and everybody that's helped here. It's a great event. It's a wonderful uh, deal to have some great weather here this time of year. Uh, thank you to the HSR guys for showing up. and. Uh, Filling up the grid a little bit more, but uh, what a great weekend! Yeah, you yeah, ended up getting gridded last in a in a race where if you break the time limit, you're done, you're out. And there were five people in front of you that got disqualified for running too fast, and you were able to come from last to first, not break out on the time. That's that's that, that's some real consistency. So congratulations on that. Tom McGlynn, who's from Naples, Florida, Porsche 993. And uh, I, I think something broke on the uh, pace lap. He, he pulled into pit lane on the, on the uh, pace lap. And perfect. So now I'm on pole, and uh, I just have to not screw up, which thank God I didn't. Things break. So, you know, you took advantage of that, and you, and you got yourself a win. So uh, congratulations. Ends up our, our cup presentations. I want to thank people for showing up because it's always nice to have a, a little bit of a crowd here uh, for the people that managed to pull off that win.